Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leal and today I have a really, really cool topic to talk about, which is the Arnold AI utility node. But before that, I know some of you might be looking at this inside of Google and this is the, the result, but I need to give some announcements to everyone in the community. We are going to have our portfolio review this upcoming weekend, which is the middle of January 2023. You can find the link down here in the description and that will get you to a Google Drive folder when you can drop a folder or a file so that you can point me towards your portfolio and I'll be more than happy to review it during this uh, weekend uh, like event. We also now have our official live stream day every day, every Monday, actually not every day, every Monday at 9 a.m. Mexico time, 9 p.m. India time. We're having a live stream. We had our first one yesterday, which was a quite a good success, I would say. A lot of people were watching and were commenting, so I was really happy to interact with you guys. You can check that out if you go into the channel down here and you go into the live section. All of the live streams are going to be there. There's cool content there that you can find as well. Other than that, I just want to remind you guys that we have our promotion going on for this month. And after this, we're going, we're going to come back with the little uh, tidbit of information. Hey guys, we have some great news for you. We know how important it is to prepare yourself and keep learning amazing skills to improve your portfolio. And that is why we're offering a super epic bundle of our best 50 courses for you. This epic bundle is available through ArtStation. It contains all of the videos and project files for our top 50 courses. We have modeling, sculpting, rendering, rigging, animation, Maya, characters, creatures, props, substance painters, ZBrush, and Real Engine. All of the topics that we've been covering in the past years are going to be there. Our top 50 courses are going to be included in this bundle. This bundle is at a super price with an amazing 80% discount. And we will have this bundle available throughout January. So, if you are wanting or you want to have some very nice New Year resolutions, if you want to increase your 3D levels and you want to become a master at the 3D art, then this is your opportunity. Make sure to check the link down below. There we go. So today we're going to talk about the AI utility node, but then why, Abraham, are we inside of Seabridge? Well, we need a model. And I was uh, looking through some model files and I found this guy right here. This was done for a, an old project that unfortunately didn't come to fruition. It was this sort of like a Reaper guy. And um, it was this like just like an old Reaper guy, right? It's just a <laughs> death. There was a little concept right here that I, I made. Uh, this was one of those projects where I actually had to do a little bit of everything. So I gave a quick concept. It was approved. And then I started working on the model. We were deciding where to have like a, like a, like a cape or something. And then we went for the floating bit. And uh, I, I don't remember if I actually re-topologized this guy and everything. I don't think I did. I think it was just like an, an update. Uh, but this is the model that we use. So I'm going to bring this into Maya so that I can show you something really, really cool. But first of all, we're going to decimate it slightly. So I'm going to say decimate and we're going to pre-process current. It's not that dense. It's 1.2 or like 3 point. Actually, let me cancel that. Let me go subtools. I'm going to say merge, merge visible. And uh, we're going to decimate this. So 2.75 uh, million. So 5 million polygons pretty much. Um, there was a question that was asked, I don't remember if it was during the live stream or one of the comments, I'm like mixing them together, but someone asked me, how can we bring a poly painted element from uh, ZBrush into uh, Arnold? We're going to talk about that uh, in the next couple of days as well. I think that's a very important topic, especially for people who want to present a quick concept, uh, but I need to show you how to poly paint first, right? So uh, we'll talk about that. We'll continue with some of the other courses or the uh, projects, uh, but today we're going to talk about the AI utility node, which is super, super handful. Helpful. So here, uh, C plugin, we're going to do a 20% decimation. I think it's fine. And there we go. It's ha half a million points, which is going to be like a million polygons. Let's go to the desktop and let's call this a Reaper for now. And formats, I always recommend FBX because it uh, keeps things like working properly. Sometimes when you export this OBJ, things get like a little bit weird. So I'm going to say file, import, and uh, we're going to import uh, that specific one. So here, desktop. And it's the, hey, where is it? Is it still exporting? Oh, it's still exporting. Let's wait a little bit. Press F5. There we go. So file, import, and we have here our Reaper. There we go. So there are a couple of nodes inside of Arno that are super useful for portfolio purposes, but also for the other stuff such as uh, compositing. The first node I want to talk about is the ambient occlusion node. So we need to have a little bit of light here on the scene. I'm going to make this thing a little bit bigger. There we go. And uh, I'm going to add an Arnold Lights Sky Dome Light. And I'm actually going to leave the Sky Dome Light as is. I don't want to add any sort of um, uh, like image or anything. It's just like a white, like completely flat white light. We're going to go to render. We're going to create the camera panels. Look through selected just to get a, a shot right here. 
This is what we're going to be seeing. There we go. And then now what we can do is I can go to uh, the object itself, right click and assign a new material. And on the Arduino materials, there's one called AI ambient occlusion. I think we've talked about this one before, but I just want to showcase for all of you guys who haven't seen it. And the ambient occlusion node, it's a super powerful node, which as you can see, gives us an ambient occlusion pass. Let's change this to the shot cam to camera shape. There we go. And as you can see, we get something that looks quite nice. I'm going to select the object here. I'm going to bring the camera visibility down to zero so that we only see the character. And as you can see, we get a super clean ambient occlusion pass. We can, of course, make this a little bit bigger. Let me go to the options here. Make this full HD and I'm going to change to GPU so we can render a little bit faster. Remember, the first time you render with GPU, it usually takes a little bit longer than usual because it's like loading everything. Uh, but once you have the first one going, it's usually super fast. So let's just wait here. And the, um, what's the word? The ambient occlusion thing or the ambient occlusion shader has a couple of things that are really, really useful to us as, uh, as artists because we can change and uh, modify elements. So for instance, if we go here to the material, first of all, we have samples. Of course, the more samples, the cleaner this is gonna be. You can see if I increase this a couple of times, then we're gonna get smoother results. Um, this you, you will get smoother results if you increase the samples on the camera as well. And then here's the important one, spread. Spread's the first one. If you bring the spread really, really down, you're gonna get a super, super sharp ambient occlusion, which could be useful for other things such as masks and procedural uh, elements. But you can use this to, to like modify the intensity of the effect. Fall off is like how fast are you gonna allow this thing to, to, to disappear, right? So if you want like a really soft effect, you can increase the fall off, and that way you're gonna have a really, really tight ambient occlusion pass as you're seeing right there. Uh, if you want like a super intense one right here, far clip and near clip, this will change again, depending on the, on the distance that you're viewing this. So we can modify this. If we change the far clip, we're not going to see the ambient occlusion as much. If we modify it here, we're going to be able to change it as well. Um, so yeah, those are pretty much the, the, the main things that we have right here. You have the spread, the fall off and the element. Now, the cool thing about the ambient occlusion pass is that you can actually multiply it against a texture. Like the result of this shader, you could multiply it against the texture and make your texture darker if you don't have an ambient occlusion pass. You can do self only. Doesn't really change that much in this case. Uh, you can invert the normals, which is, of course, going to give you a different effect. You can change the colors. So if for some reason you need like a, like a light blue and uh, like a dark, like black in this case, uh, you can do that. Uh, again, we can increase the samples. Kind of want to bring the spread down so we get a, like a tighter effect. So this is one of those utilities that you can use. Very, very helpful if you want to render a pass because what you can do is you can assign a different material. Let's add a new material. Let's do an AI standard surface and let's make this like a, like a green clay material, right? Like a dark green clay material. Let's increase the roughness a little bit. And now if we render, uh, we should, this should look like a, like a very basic, like red or sorry, green clay material. Right now we get a very like a uh, flat lighting because we have light coming from everywhere. But as you can see, it doesn't look that bad, right? We can of course add our uh, denoiser. So if we go, if we go right here, there we go. And we add an imager denoiser, uh, not Odin, sorry. Remove, let's add the optics. I like the optics, there we go. It's going to clean the image. So that's the like basic traditional, uh, just like a green material. And then we can save this image. I'm actually going to, going to do it. I'm going to say file, save image. Uh, let's save this on the desktop for now. I'm going to call this color. And it should be like a JPEG or something. And then right click, assign existing material, assign the ambient occlusion material, and we can render again. And now we're going to get a, a ambient occlusion material file, save image. Go back to the desktop and this is going to be our AO. And I'm going to show you how you can create a composition inside of, um, inside of, um, what's the worth Photoshop. Actually, I think this is going to look a little bit better. Let's go, let's go for a close up. There we go. Something like this. We're going to go for this close up. Some of you might remember this skull. I've used it before. There we go. So file, save image. Let's go to the desktop and let's save this image as our ambient occlusion, save, there we go. And then let's reassign the standard surface, which is just a very basic green material. There we go, file, save image, desktop, and my color, there we go. And here's the utility node, which is super, super useful. Assign new material, Arnold, AI utility down here, okay? The AI utility 
allows you to create different things. So for instance, right now, the color mode is set to color, but we can change this to normal. What this will do is if we render now, what we should get is we should get all of the normal map information from the character. So all of the faces are pointing up, all of the faces are pointing forward, left side, and all the gradients that you get in between. So as you can see, we get a really, really nice, uh, like normal map. It's kind of like the normal map that you would get if you uh, were to do a bake. And we can save also this image and use it for a lot of different things. Some people that are compositors are watching this video, they might be like, oh, that's really helpful because I can map this image instead of like Nuke or Natron or other one of this like node things and change like the lining information. We also have things such as the um, UV coordinates. In this case, we don't have any UV coordinates. So if I render, I'm probably not gonna get anything. Yeah, that's right, because we don't have any UVs. But let's just imagine that we have a very basic like uh, planar mapping. So I'm gonna go UV, let's do a camera base mapping. Let's see if we don't crash this. There we go. So now it has a UV and if we render, we should get some sort of like UV information. There we go. So it's very basic grading. You can see it's kind of like orangey on this side and green on this side. So there is ways to extract this sort of information. Um, there's more advanced ways to extract all of these passes. They're called AOVs, output uh, arbitrary output values, which you can use inside of compositing. Uh, if you want, we might be able to cover that. I'm not an expert on those, so I don't know a lot about how to make the use of them, but I do know how to get them. Uh, and yeah, this UV utility node is really, really useful. You can also use this color option. And the reason why this is so helpful is because it allows you to generate, I believe it's a flat uh, render that you can use for masks and stuff. No, it's not a flat render. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, that's uh, that's it. On bump, normal bump, difference. Look at this. Polygon wireframe, object mode. VAD UVs, number of LATs, object ID. That's the one that I want, object ID. So object ID is a really, really cool map that we can use to get uh, some flat colors from the object. In this case, it's not working apparently. But yeah, like all of this guys, AI utility node has a lot of different things. The ones that I use the most are the normal and probably the UVs every now and then. You can get primitive ID, uniform ID. Can we do that? There we go. So what this is doing, this is very important. What this is doing, it's grabbing each individual face and it's assigning a specific color. It's It doesn't seem like it might be very helpful, but if you guys have seen my um, uh, hair cards uh, tutorial or the, the premium course about hair creation, we use something similar like this to generate like independent strands of hair. And if you haven't seen it, remember that you can check it in Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just wanted to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. There we go. I was just playing around with a couple of these ones, but yeah, I think those are, are pretty much it. Now, let's jump very quickly to Photoshop and I'll show you how you can create a, this is very common, especially when you present a work to show all of the different passes. These are not, by the way, these are not like the passes from the, from the shader itself. These are more passes that have to do with the object itself. That's why you talk about normals, you talk about like the, the ID and stuff like that and not about the roughness and all of the other assets. So let's grab the color, ID face. Normal, where's the ambient occlusion? Ayo, there we go, let's bring them here. So a very common technique that I see people do, or first of all, let's rasterize all of these layers, is you grab a marquee tool and you mask out specific sections of the object like this. And you get this very, very interesting like effect where you are presenting the character with all of the passes that make up their geometry and you create something that looks, well, a little bit more interesting. 
So this is it guys, short video today. I just want to show you this one. This is, again, it's a very specific like render pass or render a shader that you can use, but it can present or it could turn out to be very helpful later on. Some of you, if you're beginners, then this might not be as important right now, but you're gonna remember me in a couple of years when someone asks you, hey, could you get like a normal pass? And you're gonna be like, oh, Abraham had taught me that there is a shader that we can use. And it is, it's called the AI utility shader. That's it for today, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. We'll continue with the environment and uh, yeah. We'll have some fun. Make sure to submit your uh, portfolio if you wanted to be part of the of this weekend's review. And uh, make sure to leave a like, share, subscribe. It really helps the channel and uh, it helps us keep up uh, going. So thank you very much. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.